Welcome, friends, to worship with Edgewood United Church. I am Pastor Liz Miller, and if you are joining us for worship for the first time, we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, a week when there are a number of opportunities to join in worship, whether it is on your own time in your home with our pre-recorded Sunday services, live on Zoom as a community, or if you're local, there are opportunities this week to gather outside in worship as we bring to life our Palm Sunday and Easter worship service stories. If it is Sunday morning and you are nearby, I would love for you to come to Edgewood and join us at 1130 for our Palm Sunday processional. You don't have to bring anything. Come as you are. If you'd like, you can bring along something green or a branch or a twig from your yard to wave in our processional or because we know that Jesus's Palm Sunday processional through the streets of Jerusalem was a protest, more of a protest than a parade. If you have a protest sign, something you've carried at a local march or demonstration and you want to bring that with you, that would be awesome. So join us at, in the front of Edgewood's church at 11.30 a.m. I also especially want to invite folks to our Monday Thursday service at 6 p.m. on Thursday evening on Zoom. We'll be live streaming it out on our YouTube account as well. We are going to be making flatbread together. We have the ingredients that you need to gather. I'll be guiding you through the steps, whether you are a, a Parisian baker or whether most of your meals come from a microwave. I'll guide you through with what you need to do, and then we will eat and drink in a communion uh, Monday, Thursday feast with one another. So join us 6 p.m. on Thursday evening for that special service. So with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we enter now into a time of worship. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From olive as they followed, mid an exultant crowd, the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud, the Lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly nor scorn that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven our King. Oh, may we ever praise him with heart and life and voice, and in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. Let us join together for our call to worship. The story of faith is a story of courage. It took courage for John the Baptist to prepare the way. It took courage for Mary to say, Here I am, use me. It took courage for the disciples to drop their nets and follow Jesus. 
It took courage for the paralyzed man's friends to lower him through the roof. It took courage for Peter to walk on water. It took courage for Zacchaeus to give half of his possessions to the poor. It took courage for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Faith has never been easy. It is a journey of courage. Again and again, God, show us the way. Let us worship a brave and courageous God. Glennon Doyle is one of my favorite authors, and she happens to be a member of the United Church of Christ. In her speaking and writing, she frequently uses the phrase, we can do hard things. It is one of her many mottos in life. As a result, this declaration, we can do hard things, has become an anthem for so many. You can buy these words on poster prints, on greeting cards, and even on coffee mugs. Last year, during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Beth and I painted it onto yard signs. We can do hard things together and had it out in front of our yard. These five simple words aren't particularly radical. So when I stop to think about why they have caught hold for so many of us, I can only assume that it is because life and faith require courage. Vulnerability requires courage. Relationships require courage. Advocacy and justice require courage. Facing our privilege requires courage. Faith requires courage. Even confession requires courage. So friends, let's do hard things. Let us confess together, trusting that God is always there, cheering us on in every courageous act. Let us pray. God of palm branches and alleluias, we confess. We love a good Palm Sunday celebration. We love the sound of a joyful parade. We love shouting, Alleluia. We love that Palm Sunday means Easter is just around the corner. We love good news. However, if we slow down and pay attention, 
We know that Palm Sunday was not a walk in the park for you. There was risk. There was fear. There was the threat of violence. You were leading a peaceful protest against an unjust empire, and the whole world knew it. Forgive us for glossing over the courage this day took. Remind us that the story of faith is a story of courage. And even we can do hard things. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt that we can do hard things, God believes in us. God loves us. God forgives us. Hear and believe this truth. We are known. We are loved. We are forgiven again and again and again. Amen. <laughs>
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. Beth got her first COVID-19 vaccine this week, which was great news in our household. It was not without trepidation as she has a lifelong fear of needles and would rather do anything than voluntarily get a shot. But when the health department said it was her turn, she made that appointment. She drove herself to the MSU pavilion and when a member of the National Guard approached her car, she stuck out her arm and proclaimed her mantra of courage. I am adulting so hard. This is for the greater good. I was so proud of Beth when she told me this story. Not only because she faced her fear, but because she was able to name why it was important for her to do something scary for the greater good. That why is what helped her go from scared to courageous. So today is Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week. Every year during this week, we tell the same stories. We reenact them with our processions and rituals and songs. We bring them to life and pass them down to the next generation. As we do this, though, it is not enough to go through the motions and recite, recite the scripture. We are called to remember and to name the why. Why was Jesus' processional into Jerusalem so important? Why did Jesus gather his disciples together for one last meal? And why do we tell a story that involves betrayal? a public lynching, a violent death? Why do we tell the story of an empty tomb? The major themes of our faith can be traced throughout this week. Love, hope, peace, justice, and courage. We don't always name courage as a core theme in our faith, but it runs through so much of what we are called to do. Courage to stand up for justice. Courage to come out on the side of love. Courage to wait for the sun to rise after the darkest of nights. Courage to be a peacemaker. Courage to live in community when it is so much easier to do things our own way. We could go on and on. Courage is when we live out or speak into our faith. When we do something that goes against the status quo or point towards something that might be controversial or unpopular, but we know is grounded in faithfulness to God and is necessary for the building of God's kingdom here on earth. Courage is listening to the voice inside of us, calling us to move, to change, to stick our necks out, to do something scary for the greater good. The courage found in Holy Week begins the day before Jesus' Jerusalem processional over a meal with the disciples, Lazarus, and his sisters, 
Martha and Mary. The sisters had been witnesses to the miracle of Jesus raising their brother from the dead. I often wonder what, it would, what would have been racing through their minds as Jesus sat with them that evening. Mary does not speak with her voice in the telling of the story, but her actions are loud. She takes expensive oils and anoints Jesus' feet. This is her way of offering a blessing to Jesus, of showing her gratitude, her love, and her faith in him. This action would have drawn attention to her in that crowded room full of men. And as soon as she does it, criticism is thrown at her by Judas. Jesus points out Judas's hypocrisy and defends Mary's actions. Mary's act of anointing Jesus is affirmed when he explains why she is doing this. To remain devoted to Jesus even in the face of his death. To pour out an abundance of love so there is no question where her loyalties and gratitude lie. When Mary is moved to anoint her Savior's feet, Jesus received her gift as courageous love in action. The next day, what we know as Palm Sunday, there was a processional in Jerusalem. Jesus' followers gathered to ceremonially welcome him into the city, to make his presence known to folks who worshipped him, as well as to the authorities and people who feared or loathed him. When we reenact this procession, we do so with joy. We wave palms and shout Hosanna with big smiles on our faces. But the joy that day would have been the joy you feel when you are defiantly courageous. When you know you are doing the dangerous but right thing. When you know there might be consequences for your actions and you're prepared to face them. Their processional was a protest, a proclamation that their message of love and justice would not be silenced in the face of threats. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. That is the people shouting their why. It is their mantra to remind each other and any onlookers what they stand for and who Jesus is. So this Holy Week, may we use the lens of courage to explore why so many generations later we continue to follow Jesus from processional to cross to empty tomb. Why we continue to practice extravagant love. Why we speak up or do hard things when it would be easier to stay silent. What are we shouting out for all to hear? What actions are we taking with great courage? Twice in the last week, I have heard from Edgewood folks who feel compelled to speak up and out about issues of justice. Our racial justice team is exploring how our congregation might speak out as East Lansing grapples with the over-policing of people of color. And as a local committee prepares to make a recommendation to city council about police oversight, how can our church speak out on this issue in our community? What message will we proclaim to our neighbors? What will we risk in order to be heard on a topic most folks would rather ignore or remain silent on, knowing that it's controversial, knowing that it upsets the status quo. A few days after that conversation, someone else approached me and asked how Edgewood might have a role in advocating for gun reform. With two mass shootings in as many weeks, this topic has risen in our consciousness once more. What does acting with courage look like in this situation? 
Who might the church partner with to make an impact in the state legislation? Too often, we hold back the label of courageous for people that we hear about in the news or people who are leading our movements. But what if each one of us is called to live lives of great courage, however that looks for us, whether it is facing your fear of shots to protect the greater good, or speaking out when someone tells a sexist joke, or showing up for someone you love even when you're not sure what the outcome will be. In every season of life, in every difficulty, tension, and uncertainty, we are called to courage. May we find the courage to act out our faith even when it leads to criticism. May we find the words to name our why. May we find strength with our siblings who will act and speak with us, uniting our voices as one in the name of love and justice and Christ. May it be so. Amen. Jesus still Please join your voice with mine for our affirmation of faith. I refuse to believe that I am powerless. I refuse to believe that injustice and hatred are simply the way it has to be. I refuse to believe that I am better or more deserving than my neighbor. I refuse to believe that my self-worth is rooted in my accomplishments or appearance. I refuse to believe that the church is dying because I see God all around me. I refuse to believe that the traditions of old are the only path for moving forward. I refuse to believe that I cannot make a difference. So with hope in my heart, I will strive to live a life of courage, conviction, and compassion, just as Jesus taught us. Amen. This week, there was a mass shooting in Boulder, Colorado. And so we, we say the names of the 10 victims from that shooting, praying that our thoughts and prayers will transform into action and change. Terry Liker, 51. Trelona, Bart Koyak, 49. Jody Waters, 65. Nevin Stanisic, 
23. Suzanne Fountain, 59. Eric Talley, 51. Ricky Olds, 25. Kevin Mahoney, 61. Lynn Murray, 62. Denny Strong, 20. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we can do hard things. We can do hard things together with courage when we act and speak in faith, in faith in your love, in your peace, in your call to justice that guides us in everything we do. And so, God, we are praying that you will make us a people of courage, that we will stand up to injustice, that we will demand change, that we will put an end to violence in our communities, in this nation, across your globe. We pray that you will move us to be peacemakers, that we will speak out against oppression, against the indignity of our siblings in Christ, that we will speak out on the side of love again and again and again. Help our voices to be heard when we are silenced. Help us to shout when we feel meek. Help us to draw on the courage of our ancestors, those who have gone before us and led us farther than we thought possible, to draw on their courage. Help us to do so for our own sakes, for the sakes of our children and our grandchildren, that we may leave them a more peaceful, just-filled world. We can do hard things. We know you are cheering us on. We know your Holy Spirit is at work. We can do hard things. In Christ's na name we pray. Amen. As our time of worship comes to an end, I pray that your journey this week will mean that we run into each other again, whether it is on Zoom or outdoors in person, on this Palm Sunday, on Monday, Thursday, on early Easter morning. I pray that no matter where your journey takes you, you remember that the grace and peace of God will surely follow. Amen.